Carrie Stevens streamer pattern here today. This is the Mezger's Special. There was a gentleman by the name of W.L. Mezger that had requested that Carrie tie him up a fly, a new pattern, but similar to the supervisor. And this is what she came up with. She has often tied flies for friends and, and people that she knows, or even just clients, good clients. And this is one of those that she tied for a good client. Straightforward, tinsel body, usual parts in terms of an underbelly, red hackle, underwing, and then the actual wing. As I've mentioned in other videos, the recipe in the Hilliard book often calls for, in this case, it would be, it says like two green hackles flanked on each side by one blue hackle. And to me, it's a little bit confusing in terms of, is that two green hackles on each side of the wing and then one blue, or is it one green hackle and then the blue on each side? So the two green hackles are the two for the left and the right side. Not certain playing around with that a little bit, trying to just see what works best, what I like. This particular one, I took it as the two green hackles are the center part of the wing. So there's one green hackle on each side and one blue hackle on the outside. So we'll see how that turns out. That's the Mezgers special. I'll get started tying. special with my hook and device. This is a Mustad R79 in a size 4. Debarb the hook. For thread I'm going to start with a UTC 140 denier in white. The body on the uh, Mezger's special is a silver tinsel. There's no tail nor uh, tag or anything on this. I'm going to use a Danville size 12 silver and gold mylar tinsel but because of that i'm just going to do a double layer of a tinsel on here i need to get a base layer of thread down it doesn't have to be i could start up here and get a layer all the way down and all the way back up if you want to that's a lot of wrapping i'm going to start just a little bit in front of the point of the hook securing my thread i'm going to go back down to just past the point of the hook a little bit end of the body and then come back up and i'm just going to keep these in touching turns to keep that a nice base layer of thread sure you've got a double layer here but it's the bump or rise in that is so insignificant that when i put a double layer of tinsel on there it will look just fine this way i only have to put one layer of thread on here. I'm going to put a little bit of head cement on this to help kind of glue that tinsel down to the hook shank to help reinforce it so that if it gets broken or anything, hopefully it won't all unravel on you. I'm flattening the thread out a little bit just to help me basically cover up that hook shank and get from one end of the hook shank to the other a little bit quicker. You could certainly have it twisted up a little bit if you want. It's going to narrow up that thread and it's just going to take a few more wraps to get it from one end of the hook shank to the other. Now I'm going to take my tinsel I want a nice long piece of tinsel here, maybe about 12 to 13 inches long. I certainly don't want to be in a position where I run out, especially on the way back up. 
I'm going to take one end of my tinsel and I'm going to trim this to a very fine point. You could do this to a, a uh, sharper angle if you want. But I'm going to trim that so that I have a nice fine point to that because then I can wrap that point in with the silver side up. That secures that in real well. I'm going to put some head cement along the thread wraps here. Spread that around. This is going to, like I said, help adhere that tinsel to that thread a little bit. Now, with the silver side tied in up, I can start to wrap this in and just get nice touching turns. I'm going to go to the end of the hook shank and then back. Doing this in a double layer, you get a nice uniform body that looks like it is all nice and silvery. If you were to turn around and do this with just a single layer, you could end up with some gaps between the tinsel just a little bit so your thread would show through. By doing a double layer, you get a nice base of silver all down there. I'm going to bring my thread forward almost up to the eye and I'm going to change my thread over. The Mesger Special has a head that is black with an orange band on it. Now in the last number of videos that required some orange thread, I was using a Danville 3 uh monocord. Discovered that that's a little bit big. Um, I don't like it as much and it, it could be because I'm just being a little too heavy with the thread wraps, but some of the heads just turned out a little bit too long or too big, too too bulky. I'm switching back to a uni thread, 80 and orange, and I'm going to strive to not make the heads on these quite so long or so bulky. Kind of hard to do because you've got lots of different materials in here. At this point. I'm going to tie in the bucktail and then the hackle. The underbelly is just some white bucktail. I'm going to get a piece that's maybe about anywhere from a quarter to a half of pencil in diameter. Clean out the short hairs out of that. And then any any of them that are kind of wild, like that one or that one, I'll take out. Any of them are short, I can pull some of those out or lengthen them. I want to try and get the tips fairly even. They don't have to be perfect. I'm 
I'm going to tie that underneath the hook shank, extending maybe about a half an inch past the bend of the hook. Securing that down, I'll trim away the excess. And now I'm going to tie in the throat. Again, trying to mitigate how much thread I use there. For the throat, I'm using some red schloppen. And there's three clumps of schloppen that I'm going to tie in for the throat on this. So I want to get, they all don't have to be super heavy. Matter of fact, I don't want the throat to get too heavy. So each one of these are going to be a little bit on the thinner side. There's one on the bottom, and then I'm going to tie one on each side. Once you actually start tying a number of Terry Stevens streamers here, you find that they all, a great many of them, follow very similar methods, different material maybe or different colors, but it really is kind of fascinating all the different flies she did just using some of the same methods. So with our throat tied in, I'm now going to tie in the underwing. The, that is just four to six strands of peacock curl. I want to get the tips fairly even. I'm using some strong peacock curl. I just want to get those tips fairly even. They don't have to be perfect. I'm going to tie these in same length as the uh, underbelly. Securing those to the top of the hook shank, I'll cut off the excess. Now I am going to clean this up just a little bit to provide a nice smooth platform for our wing. So the wing, as I mentioned in the beginning, is some blue hackle flanked, excuse me, green hackle flanked by a blue hackle. Mr. Mesger, who this is named after, had asked Carrie to do another streamer similar to a supervisor. So if you've ever tied a supervisor, you can, you'll know that this is similar to a supervisor. That's why, uh, but she tied it for him, so that's why she called it the Mesger's Special. As I've mentioned in a number of these videos, the recipe in the Hilliard book mentions that, like in the wing, it adds in a peacock curl as part of the wing. But then it'll mention, in this case, two green hackles flanked on each side by one blue hackle. Now the question is, does that mean there's two hackles on one side of the wing and two on the other? So two green, two green with one blue on the outside and one blue on the outside? Or is it just two green hackles together, one blue and one blue? This particular fly, I decided to give it a shot at just one green hackle and then the blue hackle and then the jungle cock just to see what it would look like. So I'll trim the ends of those to length. And I'll tie this in. I'll 
get one side at a time. Trying to watch those thread wraps. Make certain that that's all right on the side there. And then I'll tie in the other one. I have both of those nice and perpendicular to the hook shank. Seems no matter what I do, I always have one peacock pearl that just has to do its own thing. So now I'm going to smooth off the head area here. You'll notice partly because of my concerted effort to have a smaller head, but as well as using this ADOT thread, I end up with a much nicer transition from the material on down to the eye of the hook. So with all that covered up, I will put in a five or six turn whip finish here to secure the orange thread. And then I will attach the black thread to put the black bands in. I'm using a six aught Danville in black. I'll get the rear band first. Just take your time with this. All you need to do is just put enough wraps in to cover up the back third of the head. We're not wanting to build that up at all. Flatten out my thread. Get a four or five turn whip finish in here. That band is a little bit wider maybe than it needs to be. I'm going to reattach my thread behind the eye of the hook. Working backwards. I'll get the front band on here. Make certain I've got that covered up everywhere. A little bit right down there. Take your time with it. Again, you don't want to, you want to get that band the width that you want, but you don't want it to bulk up. Placing that hook and just pulling on that thread just enough to really seat that knot down. I don't want it to 
when I go to cut the thread, I don't want it to pop out from under those wraps. There we go. Keeps it nice and clean. So I'm going to put some head cement on this. Head still got a little bit longer on me than I like. Something I'll have to keep working on. In a moment, I'll come and put some black, or not black, but some clear lacquer on that to dress that up just a little bit. It'll seal it up really nice, makes it a little more durable. I'm not going to put so much on there to add a lot of gloss to it, just enough to make it a little bit more durable. But there you have it. That is the Mezgers Special. And Assuming I'm pronouncing that name right. A little supervisor kind of variant fly that Carrie Stevens tied up. Thanks for watching today. Thank you for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned a new pattern, at least a tip or trick here and there. If you'd like to help Dress Irons, you can like, comment, share, subscribe, all those wonderful things for the video. You can also head out to DressedIrons.com where you can buy flies, tools, stickers, and merch. Or you can join a growing community over on Locals at the Dressed Irons Fly Tying Guild. You can also donate to Dressed Irons if you want through the link at the bottom of the description. I thank everybody for their ongoing support as it really does help the creation of these videos. But what's important is to remember, only fly tying. You're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Thank you.